Hi, and thanks for joining me. In this segment, we're going to talk about how to create a HyperDoc. Now, if you've been paying attention to social media over the last few years, you may have heard of HyperDocs before, but you just weren't sure what they were all about. HyperDocs are a little bit of a twist on the traditional assignment that you can give out to students. It's more of an answer to creating a one-to-one -one classroom and a paperless classroom so that instead of doing the same thing that you've been doing just online you're actually creating a more engaging workspace for your students for example many people when they go to a digital classroom will just take the same old worksheets that they've been passing out in class and they'll scan them into a digital format and then upload that to say for instance Google Classroom and that's not exactly what we're hoping for when t teachers go one-to-one -one or digital. You want to use the tools available to you such as Chromebooks and Google Apps for Education so that the learning space and the learning environment and the activities are much more engaging and they lend themselves to exploratory activities and lessons where students can show their understanding more completely and easily. Plus at the same time so that it makes it easy for the teacher to keep up and grade the work. So the solution to that issue is a HyperDoc. Now what I've got in front of me here is a HyperDoc that I've created for a basic activity allowing students to discover and learn information about cell theory. We've got a basic introduction to cell theory with some questions and an activity where they can learn more about cell theory. Now in this case when they click on this lesson it is a TED Ed lesson where they can learn about the history of a cell and they can go further by answering questions and looking up resources that are available that I've pre-selected for them or in this case this teacher that created this has pre-selected and I didn't have to take a lot of time to do this to be honest because many of these resources are available for free on the web and they're open educational resources that we can link back to our HyperDoc. Then when the kids are finished with that activity, they can answer questions about the video, they can list three things that they learned or things that they might want to learn, and then we're on to the next section which is the learning activity where they they actually learn specific information, uh, facts, concepts, and theories behind cells, and then they have a section to take notes and then beyond that we'll go into an assessment section where they can show how much they've learned if they didn't do so well we can always, always click and jump back to the discover portion or we can jump back to the learn portion and then finally the last section is a show what you know section where the student can pick yes they have options they can pick either to do an infographic about cell theory in which case I've used pictochart.com where they can set up an account using their Google Apps for Education account and create a picto chart or an infographic. They can create a video that explains what they've learned using any of the Google tools that are available to them on their Chromebooks or they can add knowledge to a Padlet board that I've created and so by doing all these different things this takes it beyond the standard paper and pencil activity that students may be growing tired of over time and they, where they want more engagement they'll be able to get it through activities like this now how do you set up a document to do all this it's actually pretty simple I know this looks like a lot but it didn't really take me that long I just had to first decide what objectives I wanted to cover in the lesson what types of resources I wanted the students to use and then it became a basic process of formatting it in a Google Doc so let's take a look at a blank document and we'll start from the very beginning one of the things that I wanted to do in this situation is rather than have a standard white background uh, I chose a gray background for this activity and even back here on this when I chose a blue background something that just grabs their attention that's a little bit more inviting than just a plain white space so to do that you go to the file menu and choose page setup and from here you can choose any page color you want from the grid or you can choose a custom color if you know the hex values that you want to use and I'm just going to choose a green background and click OK 
and see that pops a little bit more than just a standard white space and then the next thing you do is insert a table for our first section now I'm just going to use a single column with a couple of rows to start with you can always add more rows and columns if you need to or you can uh, delete rows and columns if you have too many but the one thing that we want to do is make sure that this table is set apart from our background so I'm going to highlight my table and at the top in my toolbar I'm going to choose background color just choose my little paint can and choose a little bit of a contrasting color to use there that's different from our background and another thing that's important are fonts this is going to be my explore activity so I will make this a different font and by the way if you're using Google Docs there are tons of fonts that are available to you and if you just look at this list you're probably seeing that I have way more than you're used to seeing in Google Docs and that's because I've gone down to this section called more fonts and you can literally browse through a never-ending list of thousands of fonts that are available and you just choose the ones that you want to add to your account in this case I'm gonna use the font called bangers and we'll make this a little bit bigger and we'll center it on the page and then we'll fill this background in with a slightly different color and then we can go from there now the second key is that many people will want to take links that they're using for the lesson and just copy them and paste them straight in and sometimes links are easy like this pictochart.com sometimes they're longer like this and they're a little bit more complicated because they have uppercase and lowercase letters so rather than give this to the student as is I'm actually going to say to get started use this link to learn more about cells okay and instead of putting a colon where I'll just paste that see the object of an hyperdoc is to give them clickable links that they can use we're not going to have the kids type this in so there's really no need to paste it in as is so we'll make the sentence structure of our instructions do the work for us and so here where it says use this link I'll highlight that phrase go to the top to the insert link tool and paste my web address in and click apply okay and then in each of these sections you want to give them a way to engage with the work as we've done here now granted I would probably have something to grab their attention maybe a funny joke or a line to start with um, I would probably have a lot more instructions with this but I'm not going into as much detail as I've done here because we're just learning how to set up the hyperdoc but beyond that once they've seen and heard you want to have them do something so in this section I'll say use this space to take notes include three things what you know what you learned and what you want to know and then you can give them a couple of spaces below this to answer those questions so to do that I can highlight this cell click on table and then insert row below and then I can just drop down a couple of lines highlight that space and give them couple of little bullet points where they can answer that question so that creates an explore activity and then further down in our document we can just insert another table to move on to our learning activity now I've done two columns here because I might have questions along the way that I want to put here but another thing you can do instead of adding the questions in the document here is you could connect a Google form to your hyperdoc making things a little bit easier for them to answer as they go along because then they can just click on a link and go straight to the form and fill it in and that collects all of your responses in a spreadsheet in any case you would just split up your document using these formatting tools using things like a discover activity um, I've already said that you can use links to videos, you can use links to forms. There are so many resources out there on the web that you can use to add into your activity that make your HyperDoc work well. And so to give you an example of places that you can go, um, 
For instance, you can use resources such as ck12.org. Now, if you've never been here, you can sign in with your Google Apps for Education account to ck12.org, and that saves you the hassle of setting up an account with them with a different password. But to give you examples of work that you can add, you can choose standards by state or subject or grade, uh, or you can just simply go straight down to their categories and choose a subject and in this case I'm doing cells and I could browse through their content on cells if I wanted to or if we go back to the beginning they also have a lot of exploration activities here that you can do and some of the best things that they have are these Plix activities so from here I could click on organization of living things and I can see that they have some reading activities as well as some videos but if I go up to this box right here and open this in its own pop-out window I can see that it opens up this specific unit and I can choose any of these activities in fact there is a Plex activity here that I can use and I could use this exact link to jump straight to this activity allowing the kids to use this challenge activity which is similar to a Venn diagram and they could fill that out and answer questions about living things so I could link to that directly so while there are tons of resources out there CK12 is just one of those places that you can go straight to to learn you may remember earlier with my science hyperdoc I used TED ed you might just go back to the TED ed homepage and search for resources that you can use and there are tons of other things that you can do but back to our explore activity what do we do once we have set up our hyperdoc and we're ready to share it with the kids once you're ready to share it with your students like in the case of this science hyperdoc I can do one of two things I could copy this link and share it to the students by email or by posting it on my teacher website but to keep the students from actually all editing my document and working in it at the same time which is something I don't want I want them to work on it individually I could actually go out to the end of the address backspace over the word edit and replace it with the word copy by doing that and then sharing the link in this manner you're actually forcing the students to go open and force them to make a copy of the document once they open the link as you see here we pasted it in with the word copy on the end of the address instead of edit and by doing that it's taken them to a window where they click make a copy and it gives them their own copy that stays in their drive folder that they can then edit the other option is to just go straight to Google Classroom here I have a class that I've already created on Google Classroom and I could go down to the bottom and click on the add assignment button click create assignment and then add in the name of the assignment go down to the add from drive button find my activity add it in and instead of students can view file choose make a copy for each student and then this will then do the same thing as the make a copy link that I gave them except inside classroom it will also in addition to making a copy for them it will add their name to their copy and it gives them a place to turn it in and also a place where I can grade all of their work from one view and then I just click assign and it's on classroom they'll get a notification of the assignment and they can do their hyperdoc in class from their Chromebook well hopefully this gives you a couple of things to think about with hyperdocs uh, look for more hyperdoc videos later on in the future because hyperdocs are very versatile you don't just have to use a Google Doc to create one you can also use Google Sites you can use Google Slides there are tons of different ways that you can approach a hyperdoc well thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time <laughs>